Welcome to another simple engineering snippet. In this instructional video, we work an example where we determine the pipe diameter that provides the desired flow rate for the supplied pump. I hope you find it useful. Before we get started, I should point out that selecting the correct diameter in terms of hydraulics is just one consideration in the selection of the pipe. Uh, other things that would be considered would be material cost, Literally, how much does it cost for the steel to make the pipe? Also, uh, pumping power, initial cost, financial cost, or financing the, uh, the pipeline, uh, maintenance cost, and operating cost. So we're only going to be considering the uh, hydraulics. We have a lot of data provided, including the desired flow rate of 0.7 cubic meters per second. So we hope to size our pipe. So we are going to be delivering exactly this flow rate, however, uh, likely we're going to have to uh, slightly to uh, exceed that because we are limited to selecting the diameter to the nearest centimeter. So we're not going to be doing 32.634 centimeters. It's either going to be 32 or 33. All right, the length of the pipeline is 95 meters. Uh, the fluid is methanol. Density is provided along with the dynamic viscosity. Now the relativeness of the pipe is provided. So we'll be needing that to uh, calculate the friction factor, possibly. And also, the equation for the pump curve is provided. Now, our desired flow rate, again, is 0.7 cubic meters per second. And so we plug that into the equation for the pump curve. And at our operating point, the pump will be supplying 70.2 meters of energy to the fluid. So that'll be key as we iterate to find uh, the correct diameter for this problem. But we have the pump curve, but uh, let's look at a system curve. So here's an example in Go, the system curve. And as you might recall, uh, the solution is where these two curves intersect, denoted here with a uh, red circle. Uh, in this case, it looks like it's right above 0.6 cubic meters per second. Uh, oh, it's right at 0.6 cubic meters per second. And our desired flow rate is at 0.7, which is indicated here with the uh, green diamond. So whatever diameter of pipe that resulted in this system curve, it is too small, the head loss is too high, and we are not getting our desired flow rate. Uh, so that's kind of like the, the setup for what we're going to be going through. To calculate the system curve, we'll be using Darcy Weisbeck's equation. This is it in the, in the dimensions of energy per weight. And we look at that, well, we don't really know the friction factor yet. We don't know the diameter. We know the flow rate, but to uh, determine the velocity, we're going to need the diameter. So, yeah, there's a lot of unknowns here. Let's go through that. Friction factor. I'm not going to be stressing this in this video because I've got other instructional videos that cover that in quite a lot of detail. But in general, it's a function of the Reynolds number uh, and or the relative roughness. If it's laminar flow, it's solely a function of the Reynolds number. If it's really in the completely turbulent region, it's essentially a function of the uh, relative roughness. If it's somewhere between those extremes, well, it's a function of both of them. Again, I'm not going to be uh, going into detail to calculate the friction factor. I've done that in other instructional videos. But looking at the Reynolds number is always a good thing because if there's something in the Reynolds number for these types of problems that you can't calculate, that's a uh, hint that you'll probably uh, have to iterate. And to find the velocity, again, the flow rate is provided. Uh, we're going to need to divide that through by the uh, flow area, which is a function of the diameter. So the diameter is something, what we're looking for, and it appears pretty much everywhere. Uh, so we're not going to be able to get a closed form solution on this. It is going to require uh, iteration. Now here's the big picture scheme of these. Uh, I'm going to read these off and go through it. It should become more clear as we uh, work through the example. So uh, I'm not recommending you uh, uh, memorize this or anything, but this is the, uh, the big picture of what we're going to go through. So we're going to pick a diameter, calculate the relative roughness, calculate the velocity because we know the flow rate, Calculate the Reynolds number. Using the Reynolds number and relative roughness, we'll be able to determine the friction factor. Then we'll go to Darcy Weisbach equation and calculate the actual head loss uh, at the desired flow rate of 0.7 cubic meters per second. And then we'll compare that to what our pump is putting out, 70.2 meters. If it happened to be equal to that, then we're done. Stop. You, you, you guessed the correct diameter. Way to go. Uh, if it's less than 70.2, well, that's not terrible. Uh, because that means our actual solution will be uh, greater than 0.7 cubic meters per second, but that may not be optimal. Uh, so we're going to decrease our diameter, 
diameter and go back to uh, point 0.2 and proceed. If the head loss comes out to be greater than 70.2, well, then you're not going to be achieving the desired flow rate. So we're going to have to increase the diameter, go back to, we keep iterating until we get, quote, close enough to 70.2. Or in our case, we are limiting ourselves to be uh, working in increments of one centimeter. Okay, so this should become more uh, obvious as we walk through. This is the method that I would recommend students do on their homework. We'll show another method uh, a little bit after this, in large part because uh, this is a good exam problem. Now, I typically will give something like this uh, on an exam, and you won't have a computer to go to, so it's good that you're able to do this, uh, working it out by hand. Okay, so on the test problem, I probably would give them a starting uh, diameter. The initial uh, guess for the first iteration. Why? Well, it's better for me because uh, uh, it eliminates uh, the infinite number of uh, possibilities that the student may go to. So in this case, let's say we start off with 20 centimeters. And well, if we know the uh, diameter, uh, now I can find the velocity because I know the flow. And for the first row, I'm going to show the details of calculating the parameter, just so we make sure that the units are acceptable. So we get 22.3 meters per second. Now that we know that, we can calculate the Reynolds number. Again, for the first row, I'll calculate the uh, details, and we obtain the Reynolds number. So this is turbulent flow. Uh, I'm not showing the details again. We know the relative roughness. We know the Reynolds number. There are many ways to find the friction factor. One good way is off the, uh, the Moody plot. Uh, you can also use the original Colbrick uh, correlation, the Wood correlation, the Jane correlation. There's all of them out there. I'm not going to show the details, but I've done this, and probably to too many significant digits, I've calculated the friction factor. That is a reasonable friction factor, a little bit on the high end, but certainly reasonable. Now that I know the friction factor, I can calculate the head loss. Again, the details are shown, and we obtain... 292.5 meters, comparing that to the 70.2 meters that the pump is putting out, clearly uh, we're not going to get our desired flow rate. So decision time, well, the head loss is high, so we're going to increase our diameter. So next iteration, let's go with 30 centimeters. And I'm not going to show the details, and we'll walk through this. So we'll get the velocity, Reynolds number, friction factor, a little bit higher. Calculate the head loss. And 38.8, now that's significantly less than 70.2, so we will get more than the desired flow. So that's good, but may not be optimal. Maybe we're spending too much money on pipe, and we can get away with a smaller pipe somewhere between 30 and 20. So yeah, we're going to decrease the diameter. What I typically do is kind of go like the bisection method. 20 is too small, 30 is too large. Let's go with 25, walking through. And you'll notice that we're in our design space. The friction factor is fairly stable. It's uh, good to see that, but uh, you don't want to assume that up front. But that's the way it turns out. That's not overly surprising. And we get the head loss again too high, so we're not going to get our desired flow rate. So let's uh, increase the diameter. Go to 27 and 65.3. So again, it's lower than 70.2, so we're going to get more than our desired flow rate. And, well, we got one more option that falls between 25 and 27, and that is 26. So let's go ahead and do 26. And our head loss is 78.8, which is larger than 70.2. So 26 doesn't work. 27 does. So we don't really need to do any more because we're, not, we're, we're limiting ourselves to... Uh, the nearest centimeter so 27 centimeters that's our answer now again i encourage my students to do this this way on the homework so it's not good that the first time they do it this way is on the exam typically i would give them the starting point tell them to do the first iteration the second iteration and then just tell me what they would use for the third iteration and then stop if they've done the first two uh iterations correctly that's all i need to know it's clear that they're going to converge to the correct answer. Well, there's other ways to do this, especially for homework, is, well, you can just clearly use KY pipe, EPA net, or some other uh, hydraulic solution, or Excel, MATLAB, MathCAD, uh, etc. And what do you do is you plot the pump curve, equations provided, and the system curve. Once you select the diameter, these equations are pretty straightforward. Again, there's a lot of correlations available for the friction factor. 
And so let's walk through. I've done that uh, for the uh, scenarios or the iteration we've already done, 20 centimeters. Again, the uh, resulting solution is lower than our desired of 0.7. So that did not work. Went to 30 again. Uh, significantly less head loss. And so uh, but that didn't work. Well, it's not optimal. 25 again doesn't work. 0.6 less than 0.7. And 27, at that point, uh, we're at 0.72, so we knew we were good. We knew we were getting close, but we did try 26, and it doesn't work. So, yeah, 27 centimeters was our best option. Uh, it achieves a uh, flow rate of 0.72 cubic meters per second. And the desired design point was 0.7 cubic meters per second. And so uh, we're pretty close to that. So probably uh, not going to have a big impact on the uh, pump efficiency, which would be another consideration uh, for what we're trying to achieve. That's the end of this, uh, this example. I hope you uh, found it useful. If you did, uh, please like and subscribe and have a great day. Thanks.